And if you understand how many evolution, you know that we've been on this planet for people, people for us, you know, uh, for seven million years, seven million years, right? And then, and, and so in Africa, like the first person to leave Africa was Homo erectus, and that was about 1.3, 1.5 million years ago. So, you want me to go into the different hominids before them? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, when we speak about Africa and the first people being African, you first have to understand what it is to be a human or a person, right? About 45 million years ago, the first monkeys, you know, came on the scene, right? They were, you know, arboreal, because, you know, during that time it was, you know, it was, it was very, you know, foresty, you know, a lot of jungles. So they were tree dwellers. So about, you know, 25 million years ago, you had the first apes who evolved, right? About 12 species of apes evolved, right? But then what happened was about 18 million years ago, you know, the jungle and the forestry became a little dense and started to go away, started to dry up a bit. So some of the apes had to go down from the trees to find more sources of food because, you know, they were a little bigger, not as agile, needed more calories, and there was less space up in the trees. So you have to come down and find food, you know, on the ground. So when you do that, you know, you have to not walk on your knuckles, you have to stand up right because you have high grassy plains you have to see over. You know, you have to also be aware of your predators too. Mm -hmm. So because you be worried of predators, you have to work in cooperation with each other. So that's why, you know, the four apes that survived, of the 12 that were around, the gorilla, the chimpanzee, the orangutan, and the gibbon, right? The two apes that are, that are uh, in Africa, right, from Africa, the chimpanzee and the gorilla are much more social than the orangutan and the gibbon. The orangutan and the gibbon are much more solitary. But the, the, the need to hide from predation, you know, from predators, you know, wasn't as, wasn't as apparent as it was in Africa. So the, the need for a cooperative evolutionary uh, uh, society, you know, if you want to call them societies, I'll call them societies, you know, wasn't required. So this is how, you know, the... When the, when the monkey came down and became the ape, and the ape learned to be cooperative of, of one another. Now, of course, we had hair on the bodies, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when we came, once, we, once we came down from the trees, you know, and we were out, we don't have the trees to block us, right? So now the, 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 the ultraviolet rays from the sun are beaming on us. So we have to, you know, cool ourselves down because it's hot. So to cool ourselves down, we got rid of us, our, our fur, our hair, right? But we still need the melanated coating to protect us from the ultraviolet rays, which are cancerous. So as opposed to having dark hair, we have dark skin. Some called Gloger's Law that states that the closer a mammal is to the equator, the darker uh, the fur or the, or, or the skin would be. Mm. This is why if you look at the, the, the polar bear, or the Arctic fox, they came from the became from the grizzly bear or fox in the forest, which were not as uh, which, which were in much warmer climates. The grizzly bear has brown fur, mm -hmm. right? When the polar bear went up north, that brown fur would be detrimental. So, the polar bear's fur is white. Arctic fox uh, uh, fur is white, but the foxes that are in the forest, which are which which, which are lower, to, close to the equator are darker. So again, what we did was, when we lost our hair, our hair, which had the pigmentation, you know, went to our skin. So now, the skin is pigmented. Give us the ultraviolet, uh, protection from the ultraviolet rays, which are cancerous, so we can still produce vitamin D. And when we lost our hair, what we did was also produce sweat glands, so we can cool ourselves down. Right? So, around this time, you know, and we are, you know, walking around becoming cooperative, our brains develop differently. Our, our brains develop, you know, faster than they grow. And they grow, 
right? So the first hominid, hominid means, you know, human or human-like, mm -hmm. was an individual by the name of Sahel Anthropus Chidensis. Sahel Anthropus Chidensis. Ensis means from. Good go. Ensis means from. Sahel is the area in which the person was found in Chad. So an anthropus means person. So Sahel Anthropus Chadensis, Sahel man from Chad. Mm. Right? Very long names. Um, that was about seven million years ago. Then after after that um, hominid, you had you know, a Rowan Tucanensis, you know, or Rowan, uh, or um, man from Tugan, mm. right? And then as you go on, you know, the most famous of the uh, hominids, uh, pre uh, pre Homo hominids, is Lucy, right? Lucy was about three point two three point four million years old. And her uh, species was called Australopithecus afarensis, found in 1974. Australopith is southern person. Afarensis, again, ensis means from afar, the afar region. So southern person from the afar region, that's what that name means. Now, after her, you know, you get into the homo species, right, or homo type. Homo means to maker, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like, excuse me, the first Homo species was Homo habilis, which means to maker. Now, what differentiates Homo from the now Homo is the fact that they make tools. Not use tools, make tools, because chimpanzees can use sticks. And the other uh, hominids um, use sticks and other tools that were around. They made tools out, they, they made use of them as tools. But Homo habilis, is the handyman started making tools, mm -hmm. right? And when you started making tools, that's the onset of the Homo erectus, Homo sapiens sapiens, what have you. So again, Homo um, Homo habilis was about two million years old, two million years ago. Homo erectus about one point five million, you know, years ago. Homo erectus was the first one to actually leave the African continent and go to Asia in other areas of the world. So again, you know, for the, for like, the first six, I mean, first like four million, four to five million years of humanity all occurred in the African continent. Is it, I wanna go back, you made a, a statement that I found really interesting when you said they adapted and had to form communities because of predators. Mm -hmm and it made them more sociable. Mm -hmm. And if you think of Africa, mm -hmm. they've had a lot of predators. People right. <laughs> just pick their bones dry, pretty much. Bled them dry, trying to bleed them dry, or bleed us dry. Right. And it makes us more sociable. Is that why, do you see the line that I'm making between that to now? Can you break that down a little bit? Okay, um, I'm gonna go back a little bit as well, because you know, of the point you're making and understanding the difference between the African mind or the African thought and the non-African or the European thought. About, you know, three, four hundred years ago, you had writers speaking about, you know, survival of the fittest and um, the social contract and man is constantly at war, you know, internal conflict. Survival of the fittest a little later on, excuse me. Um, that was a spin on, on, um, on evolution, natural selection, I've got a Herbert Spencer, you know, made that term survival of the fittest, but they associated with Darwin erroneously. Anyway, the European believed that man was at war and always in conflict, right? Again, terms. I refer to woman, my woman, black woman, as complementary sex, not opposite sex, right? Mm. Opposites are conflicting. Compliments cooperate, right? Since the European was at war with nature, man versus man, man versus beast, man versus nature, man versus machine, man versus woman, you know, his worldview was that of aggression and attacking. 
So his idea of humanity was that of conflict eternally. But my take is, again, when you look at how we evolved, we evolved through cooperation. If you look at life itself, right, life or living things are called organisms, right? Now, organisms have, when, at, at the simplest form, organelles. When it can become complex, they have organs. What are organs? Organs are a collection of tissues which serve a particular function. Cooperation. Mm. Right? And the more complex the organism becomes, the more se segmented it has to be. You remember the old TV series, uh, Lemon Color, right? Yes. Remember the Headleys? Hey, man, they had the Headleys, you know? He said, I'm the cook, I'm the clean, I'm the, he did everything, right? And it was funny because he had 10 jobs, his wife had eight jobs, his, his son only had two jobs, so his son was lazy, right? <laughs> but the thing about it is understanding that one person has to do more than 10 people, hmm. right? So any organization, when it starts, you're the, the CEO, president, secretary, janitor, but as you grow and expand, you have to have specified tasks that you dedicate to people. Mm -hmm. So life is built over cooperation. Because an organism, same as an organization, you're going to go to cooperation. So that's how I see it. That's how I explain it. But if you are in, at internal conflict, you always see life as that. So you see a woman as your opposite. So the mere act of survival, of procreation, is that of conflict. And then, you know, of course, your worldview comes from that perspective of being a perpetual and being a perpetual warfare. That's how I find it.